Hello, my name is Stef de Hert. I'm an anesthesiologist working at the Ghent University Hospital in Belgium. In this talk, I would like to discuss with you the preoperative risk assessment of the elderly patients, and more specifically, some recommendations coming from the guidelines by the European Society of Anesthesiology, which is now called, as you know, since last year, the European Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care. I have no financial disclosures to de uh, declare with regard to this talk. These guidelines are, have been published in the European Journal of Anesthesiology and the guidelines we discuss are the preoperative evaluation of adults undergoing elective non-cardiac surgery. Actually, these guidelines were an update of guidelines published in 2011. In 2011, we did a search uh, from 2000 to February 2010, looking specifically at uh, issues and articles uh, on preoperative evaluation of the elderly. 38 articles were retrieved, finally leading to two recommendations. For the 2018 version of the guidelines, the search went from February 2010 to 2016, we found 54 uh, suitable articles, leading finally to 10 recommendations. Why is it important to look specifically at the geriatric uh, population? Well, this slide shows you the actual situation in 2020, looking at the age distribution all over the world. And as you can see, more than 9% are nowadays over the age of 65 years. Interestingly, there is some differences in distribution, in age distribution between the different uh, continents. As you can see in the upper part of the slides, the North American continent, Europe, and Australia and New Zealand, you see that the um, incidence of patients or the ratio of patients older than 65 years ranges between 16 and almost 20%. Whereas for Africa, Asia, and South America, this is still below 10%. Interestingly also, is when you look at the evolution of the world population by age group. And I want you to specifically look at the plus 65 years old uh, uh, proportion. You see the evolution between 2020 and 2100, and you can see that there will be an exponential growth in age in people aged over above 65 years. Why is this important for us? Well, here this slide shows you the number of surgeries by age group, and I want you to specifically look at the green line and the orange dotted line. We see that the most uh, surgeries occur specifically in this age group. Additionally, there is also an increase in comorbidities with increasing age. The first square shows you the age group above 60 to, uh, uh, 64 years. And you can see that almost all people in this age group have at least one comorbidity. And when we go to above 70 years, almost all patients will have at least two comorbidities. Therefore, it seems logical that specific guidelines for these age groups are uh, indicated. And indeed, uh, several guidelines have been published, such as those from the uh, Association of Anesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland, and also of the uh, American Geriatrics Society, and indeed, also the European Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care has launched guidelines specifically on the topic of the elbow. What are these uh, updated recommendations dealing with? Well, first of all, they look at risk stratification. It's very important, apparently, that you look at the functional status of the patient and the level of independency. And this should be assessed according to the guidelines with very specific uh, measurement systems so that we can have validated tools to look at the, both the functional status and the level of independency of the patient. 
Secondly, it's important to have an idea about the comorbidities and the polymedication. Most of these patients have not only additional morbidities, but they take also a lot of medication and sometimes even inappropriate medication. So we really need to know before we give an anesthesia to the geriatric, the elderly patient, that we know all about their comorbidities and their uh, medication that might possibly interfere with our anesthesia. We know that with increasing age, there is a problem, increasing problem of neurological problems. Cognitive impairment is known. Depression is frequent. Therefore, it's important to have an idea about the cognitive uh, situation of the patient, the cognitive condition of the patient. And also depression needs to be validated. It's also recommended to evaluate and manage the risk factors for postoperative delirium. We know that with increasing age, postoperative delirium incidence also will increase. So we need really to have an evaluation of this and to see whether we can prevent it. It's also important to remind that sensory impairment is increasing with age. People uh, may have problems with uh, uh, with uh, eyesight, with hearing, and this may interfere with normal communication and uh, uh, postoperative follow-up. So also this needs to be evaluated. And then finally, the recommendations um, will deal with an assessment of malnutrition and frailty. <laughs> this is important to have uh, uh, evaluated so that we know the, and can uh, offer the best um, uh, care to our patients. So this brings me to my conclusions. The advanced age is associated with comorbidities, polymedication and a higher incidence of surgery. The number of the elderly is growing continuously worldwide. We need to realize that these patients present with specific risk factors and complications, and therefore specific measures and treatment strategies should be developed and implemented for this particular patient population. I thank you for your attention.